Hello, women's basketball fans. Welcome to another episode of Locked on Women's Basketball with me, your host, Erica Lindsay Ayala. Now, on today's episode, I'm going to spend some time talking about the Big East Conference. Yes, NCAA basketball. And then I'll get into a little bit about what I'll talk about on tomorrow's episode for Thursday. But I want to let you know that today's episode of Locked on Women's Basketball is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get a tasty and affordable meal. It's an official or unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, WBB fans, Eric Lindsay Ayala here. I know it's been a while since we checked in, but I, as you might see, um, have moved. I have moved, relocated. Those who follow me on Locked on Kraken know all about my journeys and endeavors. But yes, I am in Tulsa, Oklahoma for a program called Tulsa Remote since I am a remote worker. And I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And of course, you can follow me at elindsay08 if you want to know more about that. And make sure you're also following the show at Locked on women's basketball. I'm going to be, now that I'm relocated, doing a lot more lives and being able to engage on our YouTube channel. Thanks for those who are subscribed and watching on YouTube. And uh, on tomorrow's episode, I plan to get a little bit more into women's basketball at the professional level, talking about what some of the players are doing on and off the court for the WNBA offseason. But we know it's not really a women's basketball off season. So we'll talk about that. But today I want to get into, uh, we're going to talk the Big East. And of course, a lot of people are going to keep their eyes laser focused on UConn. And for good reason, because look at this. They are once again at the top of the preseason coaches poll, unanimously selected UConn, that is, to be the number one, if you will, dog in the Big East. That is a return to what we are familiar with. Those of us who are Big East purists, we know that UConn, Notre Dame, I mean, that we had some fantastic matchups in the Big East. Boston College used to be in the – I could really go on and – Maybe some of you understand why I really don't get down with college football has done quite a number on some of the conferences, but I digress. We've got Gino Ariyama, of course, leading the Huskies. You've got coach Doug Bruno with DePaul. And then here we go. Seton Hall. I kind of like this. I like Seton Hall and Marquette. Vying it, uh, are going to have to vie for that three and four spot. Um, you know, Seton Hall is a team that you really can't take for granted in the Big East Marquette. We obviously have seen what Natisha Heideman can do with the Connecticut Sun, and it's been fantastic. We'll actually hear from some players around the Big East about if they were locked in to the WNBA finals because the Big East Media Day was shortly after the finals ended. Then we round out the top five with Villanova, Maggie Segrist coming back, of course. Creighton at six. You'll hear from uh, Tatum Rembaugh on this episode of Locked on Kraken, followed by St. John's. St. John's up and down, has been up and down in the Big East for the past few seasons. Providence, 50 years of Providence women's basketball. There are some really well-known Doris Burke people that come from Providence. So not to mention women's hockey. I just had an interview with Janine Weber for the Connecticut Whale from Providence. Moose, Rebecca Moose Morris. So all of the things. Then Georgetown, you'll hear from Kelsey from Georgetown, Xavier and Butler rounding out the preseason coaches 
poll. But as mentioned, why don't we go to Creighton first? And we're going to hear from Tatum Rembaugh. This was from Big East Media Day for the preseason coaches poll. So heading over to my interview with Tatum. Um, so Tatum, we're here at the, the Big East Media Day. Um, it's been a lot different than the last handful of years. Uh, what's most exciting about coming back to Madison Square Garden? Um, I think just being in New York, I mean, New York is a lot different than Omaha, the speed of life, the scenery, you know, you get it all here in New York. So just even last night getting to go walk around downtown and really just take in all the scenes um, and just being here, um, being able to be in person again has been amazing for, I think, almost everyone. Um, so I just say the environment that it brings everyone. For sure. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about your team. You're coming into senior year, yeah? Fifth year, yeah. Fifth year, all right. So, well, yeah. Fifth year, all right. Yeah. Um, so what are some things that you're coming in to, to year five focused on for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am just so excited to see the growth that we were able to build over the last year um, with freshmen getting experience and playing time that normally freshmen don't get um, and just being able to do things like team bonding or hanging out with each other on the road, um, you know, walking around the cool cities that we get to visit, um, just like stuff like that, just going back to normalcy um, is one of the things that I'm most excited for. Um, and then just seeing the young talent that we have as well, um, figuring out how to lead them, what's the best way to lead them, um, how to use my experience to help them through the struggles and also how to let them ride the highs that they're going to experience as well. Um, so yeah, I love that. And the off season also means peak season for professional women's basketball here in the United States. How much do you engage as part of, as part of your preparation for your season in what's happening in the WNBA? Um, you know, I think it's amazing. We watched the game um, that happened a couple nights ago, and to see what the sky did was absolutely amazing. Um, it also just helps to find like a couple point guards that I really like to watch and kind of see the moves that they do and how they lead their team and stuff like that. So, uh, all right, let's go off of that. If we had to do WNBA comps, I mean, there's a lot of point guards. Obviously, you've got Sue Bird, Vandersloot bringing home the title, yeah. and you've got Chelsea Gray. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Who, who who do you think your game is like? Ooh, um, <laughs> that's a tough question. <laughs> or why don't we start here? Like, wh how would you describe how you attack your position? Um, I would say I'm more of a facilitator than a scorer. Like, I would rather get my teammates involved, get the assist, than get the points. Um, yeah. All right. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's what, a, what a one is supposed to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Uh, Tatum, for great to be successful this season, what do you think needs to happen? I think we need to continue to push each other in practice, continue to bring that positive energy, but also that competitive energy to practice every single day. Um, we have bigs that go to work every single day in practice and fight against each other, and I think that is going to really help us in the Big East this year. Well, thank you so much yeah, for your time. You. appreciate it. All right, so you heard Tatum talk about a lot of things, what Creighton needs to do in order to be successful, uh, what Tatum thinks about her game and is there a comp in the WNBA? Uh, so pretty cool, pretty cool stuff from Tatum. Well, uh, coming up next on Locked on Kraken, we're going to head over to Georgetown. Again, you will hear <clears throat> from Kelsey Ransom, a sophomore at Georgetown, not just about what this team can do. We see again that they are slated at nine out of 11 teams in the Big East by the coaches poll, where Georgetown wants to be, similarly to Tatum, what success means. Then we also talk about Georgetown being one of the teams as a leader, a consistent leader when it comes to advocacy, and you'll hear Kelsey talk about that. That's all coming up next on Locked on Women's Basketball. As always, want to thank you for making this your first listen when it comes to women's basketball news. But right now, let me tell you a little bit more about McDonald's. Ba 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 ba. I am loving it. Okay, now this episode, of course, of Locked On 
Women's basketball is brought to you by McDonald's, which, as I mentioned, is proudly serving communities since 1965. It's a place where friends and family can come to reconnect. I don't know about you, but I'm loving that commercial about uh, the, I think they're in Florida, but the Spanish-speaking group that just kind of meets at McDonald's and how they met outside during COVID. It's just a community thing. And we see the same, of course, the McDonald's All-American game. That's a big thing in basketball and certainly on the women's basketball side of things. And I remember playing win or lose. It was a place where me and my teammates, we'd go pregame right after school, pregame or pre-practice, get something to eat before heading over to practice or a game. So it's definitely a place, a gathering place certainly has been during my basketball career. So head to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect. Did someone say locked on women's basketball watch party? Let's go. And remember, I'm loving it. I hope you're loving it that McDonald's has continued to support growing youth basketball and especially coming out of high school into college. McDonald's all American and ba 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 I'm loving it. Hope to see you around a uh, Mickey D's soon. All right. Now let's get back to locked on women's basketball. Thank you for making us your first listen when it comes to women's basketball news. We love it. We love it. We love it. Okay. Can you tell I'm excited? Am I not? I'm always excited. Absolutely. Always excited, but we are going to continue talking about the big East here. And, um, so we talked about the coaches poll. Um, let's go to though your, uh, preseason, uh, player of the year. Uh, also probably not much of a surprise, but we're going to go through who the player of the year was as selected, uh, by again, the coaches and, uh, get ready to, to also, give you who are some of the players from throughout the league um, that you can expect to see doing big things. But here it is, Paige Beckers, a.k.a. Buckets, a.k.a. getting that trademarked. Paige Beckers from UConn, your unanimous choice for Big East preseason player of the year. Uh, Are we surprised? But teammate and good friend, as far as we know, AZ Fudd, on pick as Biggie's preseason freshman of the year. Um, 10 member preseason Big East team was announced. Uh, we are going to slide on down here. So there you go. You see Paige and AZ FUD right there as your preseason player of the year and freshman of the year, respectively. Of course, Paige was preseason. Freshman of the year last year. Uh, other players from UConn right here at the top. Kristen Williams, Olivia Nelson Odota, and Aaliyah Edwards from Canada. Oh, Canada. Getting a new head coach there. Moving on from Lisa Tomitis. But anyway, we can talk about that. And for DePaul, we have Sonia Morris and Lexi Held. Then Lauren Van Kluken. Van Kluken. From Marquette, also spoke to Lauren. Probably won't get to that that interview on this episode, but maybe throughout the season. Uh, Leilani Correa, Andra Espinosa Hunter from Seton Hall, uh, Lauren Park Lane from Seton Hall, Maddie Segris mentioned that, and you see the anonymous, unanimous, excuse me, anonymous, the unanimous selections: Maddie Segrist, Lauren Park Lane, Leilani Correa. Sonia Morris, as well as Kristen Williams. So uh, those are some of your unanimous selections throughout the Big East Conference. These are your players to watch for sure. But let's now go over to Georgetown. I promised you we would hear from Kelsey. Kelsey Ransom, a sophomore guard, proper sophomore guard at Georgetown. And um, we're going to hear from her Coming up right now on Locked on Women's Basketball. All right. So, uh, Kelsey, this will be, I guess, your first Big East Media Day in, yes. in Madison Square Garden. Uh, what's is. the experience been like so far? Oh, this is, this is unreal. This is beautiful. Um, the traveling, the hotel, being with my teammates, it's been just a fantastic experience. 
Yeah, and we're hoping that this is all signs pointing to a return to normal a little bit. Um, what were some of the things, though, as you were going through your first college, you know, NCAA experience and it being very, very different than before? What were some of the things that you did to kind of just keep focused and, and uh, keep healthy? You know, <laughs> being able to step away and take the me time, you know, a couple times a week, just stepping away from basketball, stepping away from school. Um, centering myself, my teammates and my coaches were so supportive, knowing that this was as physically challenging as it was mentally challenging and emotionally challenging. Um, so I, I give thanks to my coaches for being so understanding and my teammates for, you know, we helped each other through a tough time. And I will say that Georgetown, in addition to what the Big East was doing, we heard uh, Commissioner Hagelin talk about it a little bit, but uh, Georgetown was one of the teams that also took on the mantle to have difficult conversations when it came to where we as a country, as a world, are regarding race and racism. Again, as a young player coming into the conference, coming into Georgetown, what was that experience like for you? As a, a black, woman Amer black woman in America playing um, collegiate basketball, um, you know, I, I think... The school in itself, you know, has been fantastic. You know, the team, we took a pause in the summer and stopped all basketball activity and dedicated ourselves to being educated and helping any way we can. And I think that was, you know, a big step for me. It was a big realization for me that, you know, I think I'm somewhere that values, you know, the humanity part of it as much as we do the student athlete part. All right, so let's get to the court. Uh, okay. So Georgetown coming in for another season. Uh, this conference, you know, there's a lot of jockeying that has to be to, to get into that middle of the pack especially. Uh, so what are some things that you would like to see the team work on? Uh, Not really, no. I mean, where do you want to be in the conference this season? I think we've dedicated ourselves, you know, to being a unit, um, to being kind of together at any time we do anything, either to make a mistake, making a mistake together. I think as we continue to improve that, uh, we all have the basketball ability and basketball skills to do anything we want to do. So kind of you know, working on the intangible part of the game will, you know, set us forward for success. And so one question, I'll ask it just a different way, you know, for the social media. But <laughs> for Georgetown to be successful, what has to happen? Like, fill in that blank for us. For Georgetown to be successful, we got to play. We just got to play how we know how to play, play how we do in practice, come in and make shots, and everything else will fall into place. Love it. I'll leave you with this. Uh, WNBA season takes place when it's the NCAA offseason. How much do you engage with that? And do you have any thoughts about how the season ended this year with Chicago getting their first championship? I think it, it was great, honestly. Every time the game came on, I was with my teammates, hey, game's on. Text in the group chat. I think what's really, really exciting is we have Coach Shug, who came back and now is um, in the gym with us every single day. She adds such a player element to the coaching staff. And such a, it's, she's so easy to talk to. And she relates to the game so well. Um, so I think that really helps us. And she's very engaged. And she keeps us engaged and on our toes every practice. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate Kelsey getting into not just what to expect from Georgetown, what's a little bit different for her, but also Big East and the Georgetown Hoyas really taking up the mantle when it comes to anti-racism work. And that is something that Commissioner Val Ackerman, can, uh, she committed to yet again for the Big East this season. So we will see, and you know, right here on Lockdown Women's Basketball, I am going to keep my finger on the pulse when it comes to that. But right now, it's time to tell you about a few of my faves, my favey fave faves. And we're talking Built Bar. You know, I love a good Thanksgiving meal. I really do enjoy leftovers. I kind of like that you can make different kind of concoctions and recipes and stuff from leftovers. But one thing I don't like about the leftovers, especially for Thanksgiving and the other upcoming end of year holidays, is the calories. So we want you to feast on something delicious this year. And that's why maybe instead of that coconut pie, get you a coconut built bar. Or instead of that raspberry pie or cranberry sauce, why don't you get yourself a raspberry built bar, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and all covered in chocolate as compared to about $300, a, uh, $300. Wow. That's an expensive pie. 300 calories, a slice for some tasty dessert pie, but built is great for when you're hungry and it's got a lot of protein. It's, it's got you covered for if you're hangry, whether it's waiting for dinner having to deal with all the relatives that zap your energy, or even if you're getting ready for 
to, to hit the pavement or to hit the internet for those Black Friday so, uh, sales. So there are going to be new surprises all this month as we gear up for the holidays. So there are going to be limited time flavors arriving at built.com. So you're not going to want to miss it. And because you are a loyal listener right here on Locked on Women's Basketball, we're going to give you 15% off on your next order at built.com. So when you pr- you go to built.com and you put in promo code LOCKED15, you'll get 15% off your next order. You go to built.com, you type in LOCKED15, for 15% off your next order of Built Bar. And as always, happy snacking. But once you get the snacks going, now it's time to get the cash flow right. And that's where betonline.ag has you covered. It is the number one place, the fastest and easiest place for you to bet on all your sports action. And it remains number one for basketball and football action this season. It's a new interface. It's a new website, but it is absolutely better than ever. And when you use promo code locked on, when you sign up, you get a 50%. That's five zero percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. So bet online again, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports Bet online where the game starts. All right, we've talked about uh, we've talked about a lot, folks. We've heard from some people around the Big East. I've talked to you about. I will be keeping my finger on the pulse when it comes to um, the Big East and their anti-racism work, which I think is fantastic. But yes, this is right now a Yukon town, Big East baby. But before. I let you go before we keep it moving and grooving on this episode of Locked on Women's Basketball. I want to uh, show you what we what we're working with because we do have some women's basketball for the Big East coming up, and I want to give you that schedule. Of course, this is still uh, out of conference preseason, so let me show you what we're working with. Show me what you're working with. Shake. Okay, anyone? Okay, no. All right. Not that kind of party. You just let me know. You just let auntie know. <laughs> all right. But um, here we go. So we have that Seton Hall, Seton Hall and Mount St. Mary's uh, a week from yesterday. So next Tuesday, they will be facing off uh, at 7 p.m. in South Orange, New Jersey. Then you've got Marquette and Alcorn State, DePaul and Texas Southern, Yale and Providence. Okay. A little... Uh, Love from the Nutmeg State, of course, Yale being in Connecticut, Xavier versus Memphis. All right, Memphis, I love it. And Georgetown versus Navy, that going to be in Annapolis, Maryland, right outside the DMV area. Then the next day, you have St. John's, Butler, Nova, and Creighton taken in some preseason or out-of-conference action. Uh, I love that Princeton and Nova are going to go head to head. You know, of course, the Ivy Leagues, they made a choice because of COVID to shut things down. So very curious to see what that's going to be like. You've got the Battle of the Philly, uh, you know, area with Nova and Princeton a little bit closer to Southern Jersey and, you know, that whole rivalry situation, et cetera, et cetera. And then we close out next week. Let's let me just scroll down here so you can see the whole thing. Um, but let's just get through next week and then uh, next next week we'll talk about the week after that. But um, I love this here. I love this here and Maryland. <sighs> what? What? I talked about it last time I was here on Locked on Women's Basketball. Brenda Freeze, fantastic. Salem University and Georgetown DePaul and Loyola Chicago. And Marquette versus NJIT, all happening on Friday, November 12th. Then you've got Fordham, go Rams, against Seton Hall, Western Illinois and Butler, Xavier and Utah, Providence and Maine. Now that's a pretty nice little hockey matchup. You know, I'm always thinking about hockey. Omaha and Creighton. And then we close out with St. John's and Stony Brook, a little Long Island love in there, and Arkansas and UConn. Now you see UConn um, just getting into action on uh, November. 
November 14th. So excited to see them back on the hardwood. But that'll do it for this episode of Locked on Women's Basketball. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. And now we got to let you know. Now that you've listened to us, it's time to get ready for your fantasy league. And it's time to make your second listen of the day, Locked on Fantasy Basketball with host Josh Lloyd. He hosts the number one daily fantasy basketball show on the planet. (laughs) Just felt like it was to get excited for it. But with everything Locked on Fantasy Basketball, as well as this show right here, Locked on Women's Basketball, free for you to enjoy as part of the Locked on Podcast Network. We appreciate you listening. We appreciate you subscribing on YouTube. We are integrating into a full video podcast network, and so can't be more excited to bring you all things women's basketball. Now, tomorrow we're going to go back to the pro ranks. We've got some women's basketball players trying out some things in the off season. We've got some women's basketball players trying to expand the WNBA. What? We're going to talk about Elena Beard, and then I'll get you ready, of course, for what the WNBPA has in store. All of that coming up on Locked on Women's Basketball with me, your host, Erica Lindsay Ayala. You can follow me at elindsay08. Looking forward to it. But for now, Auntie, that's me, out.